Uh, I'm going to hide that for a second. Okay. I'm going to give you about 5-10 minutes. And I want you to find the main point of 11. Let's, let's turn to Titus now. Um, I'm going to teach you how to prepare like a, a Bible message, sermon. Um, you know, this is what I taught uh, Alan and Andy. Uh, and the more you understand how to do this, the clearer like, uh, you know, sermons will get because you can follow, you can see what, where you're, he's getting this. And you can figure out if the person talking to you about God is getting it from the text. So when we say we're getting this exegetically, right? Uh, now, when I say that, it does imply you're getting it from the original language. But what we're saying is this. Everyone likes to use the phrase, it's from God's word. But you, you have to ask, well, what do you mean? It, it just because it says it or because we understand the context and the structure? Now, uh, the best sermons are sermons that are structured like what you read in the text. The text gives you the sermon outline. So if you're ever wondering, like, where does the pastor get these three points, these four points, these six points? It's got to come out from the text, okay? Um, uh, and so I'm, I'm going to give you some time to try it. What you want to do is, as you read verses 11, 12, and 13, the first thing you're going to ask yourself is, uh, what is the main proposition, Okay? Okay, the main proposition, and then you're gonna you're gonna try to write up an outline that supports that. Okay, and again, this is gonna be very brief, so it's not gonna be like in too detail. But uh, and I'm gonna show you what I do. So basically, like I was preparing this and didn't have time to sit down and write it up because I can't sit down. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, but I, I have enough here to teach you tonight a, a good lesson from verses 11 to 13. But I thought, hey, wouldn't it be nice if they tried it first? It'll give them a time to, you know, uh, wrestle with the text. And then, and then see, oh, so this is how a pastor prepares a message. And if this is how you should be studying the Bible too. It's, it's still, there's only one way, okay? All right, so let's read. Let's go to Titus 2. Um, Verse 11 through, uh, 11 through 13, uh, 11 through 14. It says, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus, who gave himself for us to redeem us from every lawless deed and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds. Okay, so read it. I'll give you just 10 minutes. Okay, it's going to go by fast. But uh, I know it's not enough time, but try your best. Try to focus in on one main propositional statement. Right? This is what this is teaching. Okay, and here are my sub points that support that. So, and, and, and I, I do want to encourage you, look at the structure as much as you can uh, and just give it a shot. Okay, now I'm going to show you how, uh, how I would take apart, you know, uh, the verses here. I'm going to pause this so that they don't have to wait for, you know, in silence. Okay, so 10 minutes has passed by. And again, uh, this is not to, you know, try to stump everyone. And uh, again, if the Lord came right now, we would be so happy because He's finding us would find us studying his word and then if he asked can i see your work we'll be like no lord <laughs> uh but let's just let's just go to heaven right now you know and just give us uh, uh, infinite knowledge okay so let's take some suggestions here um uh, we're just gonna go around i'm gonna randomly choose okay so no i'm just kidding anybody want to volunteer what they think yes Give it a shot. So, so I'm going to put your name right here. I say, Elsa said. No. <laughs> I kind of was noticing, I mean, this is also from previous lessons, the references to salvation, the beginning part was justification and then training us to renounce, focus on sanctification. Uh-huh. 
So I said the main point as zealous for good works. The first point being good works, like, uh huh. The why, because of justification. Oh, the why. Yeah. Oh, I see. That's your. I know that's not. Super oh no! I mean, you, that's like a good um, pastor thing. What is the why? Okay, and then is it all TWs like the what? Oh, oh, I. I the where <laughs> and the who? <laughs> oh wait! Oh, oh, I think it is. I was like, it doesn't start with the same letter. I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what's the next one? Um, and then just a, a second. So the first point, the why justification, uh -huh. and 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 sanctification is also one. Okay. So those two aspects of the gospel. Then the two is the how. Ooh, the how. <laughs> so cheesy. Ooh. So, so de deny, something like that. Yeah, like renounce. Maybe maybe oh. it's the ESV. That's so probably why. Renounce, renounce, renounce like sin. <laughs> yeah, and then. Okay. Probably. And then? I didn't know exactly how to phrase this, like, but, you know, pursue godliness, but, like, remove. For number three? No, it's still number two. Oh. Maybe oh. Two renounce sin and pursue? Renounce sin, pursue godliness. Okay, pursue godliness. Slash, wait. Slash, and wait. Okay, got it. I see, I, I see where you're going. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. And the third, third point? Or is it, it's just two points, right? Oh, no, it's three. Three? What's the third one? And then back to it's God's work. Like oh, so number three is like just right. It's God's work. There's I no guess like. I, was going I need a the something. <laughs> <laughs> the work the, of God. The, the what? The, the application. Oh yeah. Okay. The application. <laughs> no, I want to write what she originally wrote. What did you write? The work of God. I said back to God's work. Okay, back to God's work. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, the why, the how. Back to God's word. Okay, good. I mean, that's not bad. Um, let's see who else. Tyler, you want to try? Uh, go, go, go. <laughs> My right. first. Um, so it's about like, true, um, about the true uh, It's okay. I, I, I have the don't, don't be embarrassed. Yeah, don't be embarrassed. I have the about it, true salvation. Okay, true believer. salvation. Yeah, I know. Yeah, something. And then number uh -huh. one is verse twelve: to believer about the people who do not follow the way of this world. Um, uh, so godly believers. Yeah. Okay. Passion, worldly passion. Oh, not not follow not, worldly passion. Yeah. Okay, not follow worldly passion. Okay. Verse twelve, and then number two: godly people wait patiently for Jesus. Coming. Godly people wait. Huh? Good. Oh, yeah. And yeah. number three is uh, um, it's godly people while they're waiting will purify the, uh, ourselves to do God's will. While waiting, we'll purify, we'll ourselves, to do God's purify will. ourselves. Okay. All right. Ah, these are really good. Okay. And uh, Tiff? Breaking down the purpose of the grace of God. Okay. Um, bring salvation. So, like, like number one. Uh -huh. So grace uh, brings salvation. Okay. Train us to reject ungodly. Grace trains for uh, for against against ungodliness, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. To live godly, uh huh. And four, I did wait to see God fulfill His promises. Uh, to fulfill His promise, uh huh. And fifth, I can't really, but um, come up with the words, but it's about being like ready and purified for the Lord's coming. Okay, so being ready. All right, for the Lord's coming. 
Okay. Uh, Ricardo. What do you think? Well, I feel like I, it says that I really like, um, <laughs> like a, a list, but it's more like a diagram. And it's like, um, so the root of the diagram is like uh, in verse 14, which is like uh, the basis for everything that follows. And I, I titled that Christ's Actions, where it says, uh, where it describes what he did and the reason why he did it. So he did it to redeem us and to purify for himself the people for his own possession. Okay. And, then, uh, and then the immediate consequence of that was verse 11, where it says uh, that brought salvation to all men. And then that has like um, uh, two implications. Like the first one is like uh, we're transformed and uh, instructed to uh, live in a godly way. And then the other uh, implication is that uh, oh. we live like uh, with like an eager awaiting for Christ's return. So um, I guess. The title I put is like the implications of God's grace. The implications of God's grace. Good. God's grace. Yeah. Okay. Um, Christine Chai. Um, I took my cue from the first one. reasons of why we uh, well everything before verse 11 is um, acting um, sensibly or um, submissively so um, so my, reasons my, prep, huh? <laughs> yeah, my outline was why why we have to be um, subject to each other or sensible to be subject uh huh yeah and the reason the main reason being God uh, the grace of God has been given to us oh I see and and then I guess sub points under that, um, and gr the grace um, has given us salvation, given us. Oh, I see. Um, the That's ability okay. to deny godliness to, okay, and good. Um, to look with hope to, for the future. For okay. God to come. So, uh, Christine Chai's uh, observation is really, really important because the question would be when, the, when you see the word for there, is it referring backward or forward? See, huh? Well, I mean, that's the question you have to answer eventually, yeah. And so, she, I mean, oh, no, no, I, I mean, um, I, so one position is, <laughs> is backward. Um, but, okay, look at the way she structured it, though, which I think is, it, it you know, it's um. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, uh, because before it says be sensible, submissive, da 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 da. Why? For the grace of God has what appeared. So that does definitely look what look back. Meaning, why should you be like that? Jesus came. He gave us salvation. Uh, well, um, well, the grace, right? And grace produces salvation. Grace helps us to deny. Grace causes us to be hopeful. Yeah, you could definitely, you know, work with this. Uh, okay. Uh, Andy or Alan? Uh, I put, the man of God should speak God's word and exhort holy living with all authority. Wait, because man of God should... Should speak God's word. Speak, uh-huh. And exhort holy living. Word and exhort, okay. With all authority. Okay. With because authority. the grace of God has appeared. Because of grace, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I put um, four sub points. Uh, the grace of God has appeared in bringing us salvation. It has appeared in instructing us to deny godliness. It has appeared in instructing us to live righteously. And it has appeared in instructing us to hope for Christ's return. Okay, return. Wait, what was the third one? Uh, it is... Okay, so number one, grace of God appeared for, to give us salvation. Mm -hmm. Grace of God appeared to help us deny ungodliness. Yes. Okay, and the third one was grace of God... Has appeared in... 
instructing us to live righteously. Oh, righteously, okay. Uh-huh. And fourth, waiting, right? Yes. Oh, uh, waiting. Okay, good. Andy? Yeah, um, mine's almost the same thing. Four ways God shows us grace. Uh, first. Wait, wait, four ways? Yeah, God shows us grace. God shows us grace, okay. And then the first one is shows us grace through salvation of man. Oh, especially same thing like that? Yeah. Okay. And then John? Um, the main proposition is it initially thought crazy love and, <laughs> but, uh, in the right context I guess <laughs> but um, I, I thought okay I thought the main proposition was to live uh, this type of life that he just talked about of um, older men and older women and bond slave uh, we we would uh, do it by the grace of God, mm-hmm. and then I. Uh, to me, this is this just gave like the uh, a parallel of salvation or our our our, our life like justification, um, like I uh, um, also saying justification, uh, sanctification, and glorification, like mm-hmm. like uh, to. Oh, I see. Uh, Justification. Sanctification. Uh, so glorification would be like waiting for him? When he comes. Yeah, yeah. Looking forward to... Oh, I see. Look for that time, right? Uh-huh. And then this would be like the denying part and pursuing? Yeah. Okay. And this would be the salvation, right? So, I don't know if that makes any sense. It's just to live like the, the way he's exhorting us to live, we got to... This is how the picture of salvation, and that's how you. Yeah. And within the grace of God, you can live like that. Okay. Yeah, so these are really good. Okay, especially with the time limit that you have. Now, um, so the question is who's right? Okay, <laughs> or is there right? Now, the one who's right is the one who is the most closest to the structure of the original what? Of the original language. Okay? Like the wording, like, so basically what happens is, this would be something like what you would do like initially, like your first initial impression. And then throughout the week, you're studying to see if that really says, if that really, uh, it, um, if that really uh, portrays what the structure is actually what, saying. And one of, the, one of the things that you do want to be careful is, is that when you get like an outline like this and you're like kind of enamored by it, right? You're like, wow, it's actually pretty nice, right? Then you start building that up as opposed to re- repackaging it so that it'll present the text. The goal is to write it up in such a way that it presents the text as clear as what? Possible. Now, we're not here to like judge what each of you done. I, I think these are really excellent. Um, especially, uh, I like the... The, there's one grammatical observation there with the word for, uh, which gives reasons why you know he's saying this. But so look, let's take a look at the text, and this is what you want to do, okay? Now obviously you don't have the Greek, okay? And so it's okay, like you know you can work with the ESV and the NSB, and what you want to do is, uh, like when I read first, I'm always obviously reading the English first. Okay, eventually I hope that'll change where I'm doing my quiet time in Greek. I remember like in a Greek class, everybody's like anxious for that. I can wake up in the morning and open up my Greek text. That has not happened to me yet, okay? And so you open up your English text and my eyes are looking at particular wording, okay? And commas and phrases. And then asking myself, is this really what the Greek text actually what? Says. So in the English, it says the grace of God has appeared. Now what I can do is this. When you have your... Um, you know, your word program or whatever, you can actually like do something like this, you know, uh, indent it, and then do, okay, the grace of God has appeared. Oh, bringing what? Salvation. So I'm going to indent that. So that's the main, I guess the main idea there. And what is, what is his salvation instructing us to do? Oh, so you put it under, you guys see what I'm doing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of like just, um, structuring it to see like the various phrases to see which one supports which one. Okay, so salvation to all men instructs us to. Oh, and I'm thinking, is this a list? Instructs us to number one, what? Mm-hmm. Uh, I wish I had a better. Okay, to what? Deny ungodliness. 
And if there's the word and, it must mean and what? And worldly desire. And I, I like to do this. I like to put the word and right in the middle just to see like a, like a, like a, like a list, right? Okay. And there's another and. Look, ooh, look at that. So, okay, I can't just hold it. Okay. And then, wait, what just happened? Oh, yeah, I have to do a. Okay, and to what? Live sensibly, righteously. So now he's not even using the word and, right? And then as I'm doing this, I'm constantly thinking, what does the Greek actually what? Say, okay? So, the Eng so you can, okay, anyways, you get the idea. So, you know, in the English, you can look at this and go, okay, today's lesson is about what the grace of God does, right? And then you, ex you explain the grace of God is Christ. Christ has appeared, gives salvation to all men. And you just have to explain that part. I was going to spend a lot of time on this, that salvation to all men obviously does not mean universal what? Salvation. This is more of like an invitation to all. Jesus says, all come to what? To me, while we know not all will actually what? Go to him. And like the invitation is given to all. And so, what's this instructing? And then this is where I, I would like to, I would go into like a word study. Why does he use the word instruction? Because it's literally like instruction, teaching, tutoring, like bringing someone up. And you realize, oh, Jesus Christ, when he saves us, he's going to start teaching us. The first thing to do is what? Number, and here's our sub point. One, deny the godliness. Two, deny what? Worldly desires. Three, to live sensibly. Like, this is interesting because there's no comma, right? And then you read, the, you, and you, and then you read the Greek. Anybody have a comma there in your versions? ESV? ESV? <laughs> <laughs> Elsa, ESV? Does it have a comma? The I live self control, comma, upright, comma, and godly lives. The word and. Does the word and appear? Oh, before? does the and? No, right? And to live sensibly. Self control. Self control and then righteously right after? No, there's a comma, but I have upright. Oh, but do you see the word and there? No, right? I have and godly. But be between. Oh, between. Oh, oh okay. Right. You're saying the, that one is the only one that does yeah. not have and. So that, 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 that was so one of the things I saw. I'm like, wait a second. What is this referring to? Anyways, and then you put this right over here. So you got four things. Ungodliness, denying. Worldly desires, live sensibly. And number four, waiting for what? No, that's the fourth one. Godly in the present age, looking for the appearance, so that would be like five points. So this will turn into like a five point lesson. And then, now, but now, before you just jump in and start teaching this, remember, don't follow your first impressions. Okay? Because we're sinners, and we always get it what? Wrong. Okay? And so the, I, the, way, the, the way this works is that, that the Holy Spirit works through effort. Okay? He, he doesn't make it easy for us. So like Martin Luther will say something like, when I look at the text, it's like climbing up a tree. And once I'm climbed up a tree, I go to the, one of the biggest branches. Then I climb onto the biggest branch. And then I look at the small leaves coming out. I, nip, I pick every single leaf and I turn over every single what? Leaf. And that, that was an example of how he does study. If we all had this amazing ability to just to understand... Pretty much every, anyone could be a pastor. You know, there's no need to study, right? Then every pastor should have two jobs, right? Uh, one job, secular job, and there's no need to study the Bible at all. He can just think of it. So whatever first impression you get, hold that thought and then just keep digging the text, okay? You keep digging and that's how the Holy Spirit rewards you. Like the more effort you put into it, we call it illumination. He starts showing you things. And, but it's not like, it's not like mystical where he helps you see something that you've never learned. Like suddenly like the Greek makes sense. No, nothing like that. You have to actually start studying what? The Greek. So you have to do whatever you can. Read commentaries. Sometimes you have to read like Catholic commentaries. Because they, they just know more Greek than regular scholars. But you use that information. You put it all together. All the effort that you put into you, the Lord begins to bless it. Okay. And then it becomes an issue of when I stand before God, will He commend me for what I just, what? Prepared, right? So think of it like, I, I remember um, 
uh, Alex Montoya is saying that when you prepare a sermon, it's like you don't throw like a slab of beef at people as they eat, mm-hmm. right? You take a slab of meat, dice it up, you, you put oil on the fry pan, you heat it up, and then you mix in the vegetables and you mix in the spices and then you cook it, you sear it on one side and everybody in the con- like, was like, oh yeah, getting hungry, right? And then you prepare it and you say, here, have a meal. And that's basically what all of this, this is. Uh, you guys, uh, you know, writing up all of this is trying to prepare the best possible what? Meal. And sometimes you got to start all what? Start over. Now, so let's ask the question, well, what does the Greek say? Well, um, so I wrote the English next to the Greek there. Uh, I'm just going to give you just a, like a gloss, right? The word, this is the word for, this word right here, gar. It usually comes like later. So if you read it straight, it'll be like appear for the grace of God. And so terios, that's salvation, all. Anthropo, anthropois, that's like man, anthropos, anthropology. So appear, the grace of, uh, grace of God appears. Salvation is given to all men, or salvation is offered. To, okay, you have to translate it as salvation is offered to all men. And then verse 12, it has the word paideusa, the first word there. I should just underline it. Okay. Uh, this word right here, it means to teach. Paidea, to teach. Pai, if you look at the noun form, it's a child. Okay? So like, it's like teaching a child, basically. Uh, the, this right here is us, the word us. Okay? So teaching us, and it's the participle, present, uh, active. It's like a present ing thing, like teaching constantly. So in salvation, you can imply that the Lord is constantly teaching us these things throughout our Christian what? life. It's not something that happened in the past and it stops. It's something that will continue what? Going. Okay? And so, what's the first thing? Well, the first thing He teaches us to, it's like, you can say, oh, this is a, the negative part. Uh, he's teaching us to deny what? Un, um, well, here. This word, this word is the word henna. Henna with the... Um, uh, with this, it's, the, it's, it's a purpose clause. Okay? Anytime you see the word henna, uh, you, in the NASB at least, you'll see the phrase in order, in order to, or in order that. So what is the purpose of him teaching us? The first thing is the negative, to deny what? To deny a sabion. Okay? Uh, a, alpha, alpha privative, not godly, or ungodly. And then notice the word chi there. So I, look, I looked at the Greek text and there's definitely three chi's, right? One, two, and what? Three. Um, so, but if you count it, not counting the chi, this will be one, two, three, and then what? And then four, okay? So the first one is denying godliness, two, Cos, cosmi, cos, cosmeo, like cosmos, the world. This is the word for lust, epithumia. Okay, epithumias. Okay, so from those, now this is the part where, if you look at the English, remember I told you there's a, a where was it? Um, right here. This is the worldly part, right? This is not in the Greek. And then, and then it goes to sensibly. Okay, look right here. Uh, where'd it go? Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. So okay, so here's the world, right? The world for lust. Why is that colorful there? Okay, and this right here means to be sophrono, sensible. Okay, like uh, when it says in Titus two, uh, older men are be to be temperate, dignified, and sensible. It means like in the, in, the, in the right mind. So, now, I don't have a conclusion yet. So as I'm studying this, this was my, one of my questions that I have to investigate. Why is it written this way? And is the English translation accurate? So I looked at the ESV, ES, and the NSV, and New King James, and they all word it that way. So I'm thinking, there must be something that I probably just don't understand with the Greek grammar. So I'm going to have to read until I find the light. Until I find the answer, and so if I'm going to teach this on Sunday, I need to know why. Because if you if you read if you read it literally, it reads like this: uh, the world's lust, 
sensible. Like, what does that mean? But in the English, it makes it into like two distinct stuff that Paul is saying, right? Like, deny ungodliness, deny worldly deniers, and deny... But instead of saying deny being sensible, is he saying live sensibly? Like, where's the and? Okay, you get the idea. So this is, like, this is where I have to start investigating and maybe it's like no big deal. Like I'm, I think it's a big deal and it's really no one. Like, it happens a lot. I'm like, oh, this must be so important. And I'm like, nobody's writing this. Oh, I must have found something that no one has ever won. <laughs> Obviously not, okay? And so, but what I'm saying is this helps you to think more like exegetically. This is called grammatical approach because again, we want to know if there's four points or five points. Or maybe, because I was thinking, like, I was thinking of all these scenarios. What if it, like, what if there was, like, a nuance there where denying worldly desires is a sensible way of living or something like that, you know? Anyways, when you do your study, you, you write down all the possible things it could mean, and then you go back and you test yourself. And so, you, again, that's why you don't present your initial, what, inclinations. Uh, now, there are times when, you know, we sit around and we go, what, is, what does this verse mean? And we kind of spew it up. Uh, sometimes it's good when you have, like, well-trained people. But, like, in my, when you do it with, like, high school kids, you have to correct them. Like, oh, no, that's not what it means. You know, that, you, can't, you can't say that. Well, I, okay, that sounds nice, but, oh, uh, okay, you don't forget it. We're not going to do this, you know? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Cause, because when they share, it's very sincere and they want to be somewhat commended and you want to encourage them, but then at the same time, you have to uphold the truth. Yeah, and so that's why uh, when you train the high school kids to do this well, they're able to say the right thing. But you know, if you do it to it just with anyone, they'll kind of just, just gloss or they'll, they'll read it and they'll just kind of say what they want. And yeah, you get the idea here. So here's a big question. You know, why isn't there... You know, why, why did they put the word and smack between those two? And because Paul definitely uses and all the way what? Through, right? I think it's pretty obvious. So, you know, this becomes like a research. And then you obviously have and righteousness. And you say again, godliness, living, uh, to live. So godly manner in the present what? Now, I forgot I should have put this right over what? Here? Because it's telling us we're going to have to live in this age. But we have to live in a very, what? Godly way right now. And then, you know, you, got, you guys all picked up on that. The waiting for... Uh, and this is quite interesting because this is saying that every true believer longs for the appearing of what? God. So you meet a lot of people who don't care about the future coming of Christ. Uh, or... People who are more interested in about like Satan and tribulation and revelation, you know, what's going to happen. But what is, what is this saying? It's saying that the grace of God teaches us to wait for Him because He's our blessed what? Hope? You see the word right here, makarion? It's the same word for makarios in Matthew 5 where it says, blessed are the poor in what? Spirit, it literally means happy. The, we're hoping for the happiness of the future with Christ. Okay, that's the idea. And not only that, not, well, not, it's not self-focused, but the focus really is on the appearing of His what? His glory. And notice right here, mega low is, worth, is the word for great, mega. The appearing of Him being what? Great. The idea here is the Christian is waiting to see God. He wants to see God display His glory. It's not so much, you know, take me out of this misery or take me to heaven so I can have a lot of like, whatever. The, the genuine believer's desire is to put God on display. And the day that that will happen is when he actually, what? Comes back. And notice the phrase, right? Doxa is glory, okay? Doxa is glory. That's as, you know, what else? The gr- then he uses the word mega, to, to emphasize not just appearing of God, but the great what? The great God. And why is He so great? Well, He's our Savior, uh, Jesus what? Jesus Christ. Now, 
you know, you're asking, well, what, what did I do? How did I write my outline? I wrote it here. I'm still, I came up with like about four propositions and maybe as so I'm writing like several to see which one will fit. And I was, thinking, I was thinking, here's one. Should I title it The Inevitable Result of Salvation? Okay? Because that's the idea here. Like every believer will be taught by Christ to do all these what? Things. It's inevitable. So I'm trying to imply that this text is saying you can't, you can't become a different person. This is how every true believer has to what? Be. Uh, another phrase I came up with, the certain transformation of every sinner in salvation. Okay? And then, um, and then if you want to put the instruction idea, I tried maybe instructions of genuine what? Salvation. Or my final one was, what Christ will inevitably produce or lead a converted sinner to what? Become. Okay? Now, you know, you take all those phrases and you can, you know, we we uh, we we do this, but here's my outline. Um, I'm I'm gonna I have two main parts. Okay, so notice how, um, uh, and this is fine. Okay, like Tiff, four out of uh, five points straight down. Okay, um, uh, Elsa's three point. The why, the how, the back to God. You know, <laughs> okay? and Taos, godly godly believers, godly people. Godly people, okay? All right, anyways, you can, you know, the outline is more like, um, um, you, can, you can change it up, but so the best outline, as I, as I learned in seminary, is try to get it from the Greek text, but sometimes, like, it's almost impossible, right? If you, if you stick to this, it will just be five points. One, two, three, you know, for five. Now, can you get a little bit creative and make it easier? Because if you stand up and say, we're going to study five points, people go, oh man, it's going to take forever. Right? And then you have to promise them, I'll get through this really, really what? Fast. Now, just a side note, when you do teach, we, we know it's God's word. And, yeah, I guess there's a certain side where we have to say, it doesn't matter how long it takes, you're going to listen. It's God's word. Boom! It's authoritative, right? And it's kind of like, none of us will ever argue with that. But, God gave us personality, temperament, likes and dislikes, and attention span. It's everywhere, right? And so if you're going to speak or teach youth or whatever, you got to make it munchable. You know what I'm saying? You got to make it like, like tasty. Like, you know, this beef is good for you. It's protein. Eat it. You know, it's like cooked, no seasoning. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make you healthy, but it's not going to taste good. So that, that's where I think preaching comes in. You got to make it, you know, flavorful, tasty. Basically, you got to learn to deliver it, like speak it and have a, whatever it takes. Eye contact, voice modulation, intonation, you know, hand motion, you know. And sometimes hand motion does get kind of in the way, like a piper loves to do this. <laughs> right? I don't know why. It's just And then Steve lost it. They did a whole video on it. It was so funny. And then MacArthur's window washing. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. He'll, he'll, he'll do this most of the time, and then, and then, and if he does this, like, I'm gonna wash the windows here. Wax off, wax off. And I, I know, I think one time my brother told me, my, I used to make facial expressions up there. Whenever I'm trying to think, and then I know that, I realize I gotta stop. And, and this is Alan's first time when he's preaching. <laughs> I could go on but, but it's like you don't know it but you can see it <laughs> and then oh excuse me yeah, so what, what I'm saying is whatever it takes you have to be as natural and there's a lot of things you can learn on, you know, online about how to do this presentation now obviously Friday night is more laid back so I like to kind of you know uh, you know, walk around, whatever. But anyways, so I came up with a two-point outline instead of like a five or six-point. And here, let me show you how uh, I did it. It's, uh, it's kind of deceptive, right? Because I'm trying to fit in all these points, but I'm going to tell everyone I have two points. <laughs> okay? So and I'm going to have to reword this, but basically the first one is repentance from what? 
from sin. And the second one is pursuit of new life. Right? And then I'm going to list, okay? How do you repent from sin? Point, sub-point, uh, deny a word ungodliness or worldliness. Oh, the second one is, yeah, deny worldly lust. And then, obviously, the question is, what about the word sensible, right? How do I put that in there? Uh, and then, so the question is, do I put it with that or do I put it with the pursuit of new life? New life. Because remember, Paul left it with uh, the Holy Spirit through Paul, left it, uh, left it right there, right? So if I want to be faithful to the, um, the outline, well, this is negative, right? Mm-hmm. And then, so the question is, well, there's no and, but why does it start positive? Or, I mean, so what's the idea here, right? So I kind of broke it up right here, the negative and what? The positive. So there's like a negative side to Christianity and what? Positive side. So I mean, that's something I have to figure out later on. And then, uh, so I did that. And then where's my outline here? Uh, yeah. So, and then the pursuit of new life. So I'll just put sensibility just for right now. Because uh, I, I don't know where to put it. And then uh, righteousness, pursuing righteousness. And then uh, godly lifestyle okay, uh, on earth. And lastly, waiting. Okay? Or I guess we can call this perseverance. Yeah. And, then, and then I'll push a sub-point to that, the blessed hope and the display of God's greatness. Yeah. So, basically, yeah, so it, when people are listening, their, their minds are hooked on two main points, repentance from sin, and then you can kind of like wax eloquent on like emphasizing uh, that, it, that when, you're, when, you're con- when you're converted, it's always, there's a negative side. There's always the repentance side, okay? And it's continual, and then there's always the positive side. So, you know, and then you can kind of go through each point. And so you can see like, I would make... I would make this into like week one, <laughs> week what, two, week three. So this is like a four week, five week series, okay? But at the same time, you can do this all in one what? One, one try, just go through it, you know? But if you want to get really into it and you see some, all these like, like I would really take a lot of time right here because this is kind of like the future hope and the, you know, but it all depends, like, when you're studying, like, what do you want to emphasize? For Andy and Alan, I've been telling them, just do it all in one sitting. And, you know, as, and later on, they'll be doing, like, these week-long, you know, studies. And so, I mean, like, several weeks of series. But any, anyhow, uh, I think we've learned a lot just by looking at this. And you realize, aside from that uh, grammatical uh, issue there, uh, uh, you know, the main lesson is, is that when we're converted... Uh, there are certain things that's going to happen, okay? Things that will happen and things that we, on our end, need to, you know, need to work on. And you've also, you've also learned that you're going to try your best to stick to the structure of the... Uh, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. You, you want to look at the structure of the Greek. Uh, and the English does help. If that's all you have, that's fine, you know? And so you want to try to order your outline based on that. And then so if you teach the structure and, you know with what the order is, you're basically saying, this is what the Holy Spirit what, wrote. Now you can say, this is the word of what? God. Okay? Um, yeah. So, sometimes like, uh, when you don't do that, people make their own structure. Which at times, will sound okay. But you're basically disregarding how the Holy Spirit what? Ordered it, based on human language. And so we have to keep that in mind too. And yeah, I hope that was very insightful to you, uh, you know, helpful. So when you study the scripture, you know, try, try to do it like that. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this time. It was a wonderful exercise into the study of scripture uh, and to study how you wrote it, to understand how to uh, work uh, under the inspiration or the, the moving of the Spirit. We realize it, it doesn't just happen where when you open up the Bible, boom, you know, we just get these impressions in our mind. But we have to uh, test the impressions that we get, our initial impressions, 
to the structure of the text and the wording and the lexicals and just all of that. And then we learned today that that's how you wrote the word and that's how you want it to be done. Uh, that the greater effort we put into the text, uh, the greater blessing you'll give to that person to understand the will of God. We realize, Lord, that it's not easy. And that that's why there is a group of men uh, that you have given the gift to do this basically full time. And we pray that one day we would have full-time preachers in the ministry, uh, not just so that they can just preach, but that they can help us understand the Word and that people will flock into the ministry. We know that it's your sovereign hand, but that they on their end will come because every time they come, they learn. Uh, their souls are fed with the clear meaning of the text. Oh, Father, would you build Titus Church in that way? where this ministry will display your glory through the intended meaning of your text. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.